and welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Nyambura and this is 100 on books this is another pre-running episode so running the years anyway <laughs> please be focused so that you can go run I'm going to be talking today about the three books I finished in the week ending 23rd December 2022 and the first of those was Blood Feast the complete short stories of Malika Mustad Draf translated by Alice Gatry from the Arabic which was a buddy read with MJ I'm going to put her Goodreads link downstairs and I originally did a parallel read of this so audiobook and ebook the ebook the audiobook is narrated by Amin El Gamal and Lamis Isak and then I gave up on the audiobook because I've realized that I don't do very well with the whole um, audiobook for short stories and especially with these short stories because some of them are so short you feel like you're missing something so say I'd be washing dishes or I'd be doing chores around the house which are not washing dishes and then I'd be like um, did I just lose my connection is something wrong but no it would be that the story is super short which if you're into that sort of thing I find that um, they are nice for when you just want to pick something up say during a Pomodoro break or something like that read it not have that lingering feeling of oh I still have to finish that story you see get back into what you're doing and so on so if you are looking to pick something up during this holiday break where maybe you're in between one event and the next one task and the next or whatever this would be a great book to pick up and what is it about Nyambura? Always, always that question. Um, these short stories are set in Morocco, where Mustadraf was from, and they feature women mostly, but also some queer men who are navigating life um, in what can sometimes be a conservative society, but which can also be hypocritical, and what that means in terms of their relationship with gender, sex, sexuality, their own bodies and how they feel about them, how they inhabit them. I kind of struggled with these stories to be honest. I don't know, somehow they just did not land for me as much as they landed for MJ for instance. If you go to Goodreads and you follow her, you'll see her review and yeah, now it hits me that I should probably get to at the very least writing something on Goodreads or at the very, very least, <laughs> since I already said at the very least, um, putting, you know, a link to the bit of this episode or an episode when I talk about a book because clearly, like, I have thoughts. But yeah, um, some of those stories are really interesting. They really, you know, like, hit you. But as I said, part of it for me was that because some of them are so short, the impact is lost in the brevity of the stories but they have their uses some of the stories felt super familiar to some of the ones i read in high school for instance there was one about um you know a girl using certain mechanisms to harness the power of virginity in her particular society her particular culture which reminded me of a story that i read as a teenager in I'm going to say half a day and other stories but that was originally set in in Egypt and of course half for that is that there are cultural similarities across what we now call MENA the Middle East and North Africa but on the whole yeah like some of those stories really pack a punch so it would be interesting to you know pick up if you're looking for a book in translation, a book that really talks about the place of women in society and how, as I said, they navigate sex, sexuality, gender, and so on. The next book I finished, I wrote here in my notes that this book is bleak. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. The next book I finished was Refusing Compulsory Sexuality, A Black Asexual Lens on Our Sex-Obsessed Culture. I listened to this and it's narrated by Yuli Alice Shen. And I forgot to mention this, the book is by Sharonda J. Brown, but it's also going to be here. Right. So I picked this book up because I'd seen it in one of those, you know, like um, slides people will post on Instagram. But also because I think most of us who've had time or who've taken the time to think about sex and sexuality 
already familiar with the concept of compet as we call it these days compulsory heterosexuality which is this notion that yeah a lot of us are socialized to think that the only way is to be straight and that's not really the only way but in this book Sharonda Brown challenges us to think about the fact that what compet does not truly address is the fact that we are still compelled societally to be sexual beings like as there grows more and more acceptance of non-heteronormative couplings and so on there still isn't acceptance of the fact that yeah you could just be disengaged from sexual experience like be disinterested in it even and so on but she also talks about how this compulsory sexuality intersects with notions of black hypersexuality or you know like the notions the expectations if i could say that of black women's sexuality as you can imagine black capital b here is mostly about the african-american experience or the experience of black people resident in the u.s so there's some things that don't generally resonate here as much but i think there is something like i've been thinking a lot about how even not just about asexuality which is at the core of this book but also the fact that for instance um the sexuality full stop of black people black women especially is problematized everywhere like in the global south in the in the global north so that for instance in the, in the global south it's framed as this very dire need for contraception to essentially make sure that black women do not have more babies etc 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 but also at the heart of it this notion that black women are hypersexual and so you know you can't really control their sexuality all you can do is control the product of their sexuality which is to say children and i was having this conversation with yb um was it yesterday or the day before yesterday the day before yesterday and we were talking about and we were talking about these notions of like overpopulation and so on and i was a bit like yeah for me it always reads as a eugenist um, idea because nobody's lining up saying some of these billionaires with more than one child more than two children more than three children uh should have fewer children but somehow a black woman in the global south who has more than two children no 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 we need to stop that but anyway going back to this book um i found it really interesting i, I listened to it after my little runs yes runs and and on my walks and so on and it had me thinking yeah about the fact that there is very little room societally to interrogate one's sexuality or lack thereof or if one has come to terms with their asexuality where they are along the sexual um spectrum and yeah like this is a really great book to pick up it's very well narrated if you're into audiobooks so i'd highly recommend that and going back to something i said last week i can't emphasize enough how important it is to read in community because <laughs> i really wish i'd read this with other people and this is quickly becoming a problem especially as i read more and more non-fiction this whole reading by myself it's not giving you know because i have all of these thoughts i have all of these questions and it's like who do i ask and even if i i ask this say on the internet it's one thing to talk say to people who are resident that's a good <laughs> who are resident in the global north it's another thing for instance to be talking to people who live in this context um in my context which is to say the global south so that's book two and then the final book i read was the complete mouse by art spiegelman which comprises of mouse number one and number two number one being a survivor's tale my father bleeds history and number two being a survivor's tale and here my troubles began and this is one of those rare times when I have the book. <laughs> I borrowed this from the Bookworm Library in Gigiri, Nairobi. Uh, my friend Angie, I was talking about Angie before and I'm going to post a link to her Twitter down below, introduced me to the Bookworm Gigiri. And originally I was like, eh, I use all of these libraries as you know, this is part of what led to Maktaba Manenos. And so I said, yeah, 
we'll just make a day of it and then I'll see what the library could possibly offer. And when I went there, this was one of the books they had on their comic book shelf. And I'd been looking everywhere for it, you know, now that I'm in my no acquiring books in Ansavari Ways season <laughs> era. Um, so I had to pick it up. I paid for membership. Membership is um, 1,500 shillings. Is it 1,500 shillings? No, it's 500 shillings a month and 2,000 2, per book. Like as like a deposit for borrowing books. So I paid 5,500 for three months, which is two books, which is 4,000 deposit. It's a refundable deposit and 1,500 for those three months. Anyway, this is not about the book I'm gigiri, this is about mouse. So, as the title suggests, as Pigelman, he um, has these conversations with his father who was a Holocaust survivor about, you know, his life, his experience, um, the, his life before, before the Holocaust, like before he's captured by captured it might not be the right word but yeah before he ends up in a concentration camp his life in the camps and his life afterwards and he melds that with his own experiences with his father they had a bit of a complicated relationship for extra context his mom committed suicide before the book begins when art was 20 actually and that left him with the one parent and then his dad remarries another Holocaust survivor, but they have a very fraught relationship. And so there's just that tension. And so, but that tension is also drawn as Art's father is relaying the story of his time before, during and after those concentration camps. It was very heartbreaking at times, but also I think Spiegelman does a good job of really showing the humanity of his father, which can include him being, you know, very unsavory, like he is very, very miserly. And Spiegelman has some of the art, because his father is also called Spiegelman, art has the anxieties of living in um, an Anglo world, in which, by which I mean like a white Anglo-Saxon protestant or a wasp world and so he's afraid that if people cotton on to how miserly his father is for instance it'll really be drilling down on this stereotype the anti-semitic stereotype of jews as stingy and so on but is that for instance there's this moment in one of these when in the collection when um his dad is super racist <laughs> like it was so unbearable to read as a black person because he's being racist towards a black person and a bit of me was just like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa lad, can we not but i think it's important to complicate some of those narratives because it's often easy to write of people who um have survived really terrible things as holy good you know like they're saints for having come out on the other side but a huge thing that's emphasized here is how big lack how big a part lack played like that he knew english for instance that he spoke multiple languages that he excuse me had a variety of skills that he was fairly good at speaking to people and forming connections and so on and all of these came together to help him survive what was a truly terrible time while also acknowledging all of the you know again elements of luck that go into history that for instance if you stay in one place you might die if you go to another place you might leave but how do you know in a moment of crisis any of these things all of this stuff you know hindsight is 50 is 50 hindsight is 20 20 and all of that i as much as one can enjoy a narrative like this enjoyed this um somebody said this it was actually tracy from the stacks podcast she talked about this on goodreads and she was like i'm not too sure about you know the whole mice and um cats who are the germans pigs who are the poles dogs americans frogs the french and so on 
I, I don't know what utility it serves, but um, I think it's for someone who is not me to answer that question. All I can say is that this was an interesting book to be reading day after day and considering it comes in at under 300 pages i'm surprised i took as long as i did but i think i was also sitting with all of the stuff that was in the book um there's something else i wanted to say yeah so one of those things was that considering how it's just in black and white let me just i don't know if you can see this all the drawings are in black and white but it really caught my attention and at times I'd have to put in a timer or tell myself, you know, I have to go to sleep after this particular chapter or something like that, just so I will not, you know, finish it all in one night or whatever. But so glad I picked this up. And if you've been thinking of picking it up, um, there's been some controversy around it in the US. That's actually part of what drew my attention to it initially. Um, yeah, this might be something for you to pick up. What else? I'm recording this on Christmas Eve. 24th December 2022 Merry Christmas Happy Holidays Seasons Greetings ETC to all who celebrate and even if you are not the sort of person who you know marks Christmas you know with any fanfare like I don't I hope you are having a good time and hopefully that you get a break from work or at least you know are having like a slower time in your wage work if you are involved in that I um on leave as i said vacation as the americans would call it all of this coming week the 26th and the 27th are both holidays here in kenya or at least we have the day off we have those days off work and then i took some days off work basically till the new year so i don't go back to work till the third since the second is going to be a bank holiday in kenya and the goal here as if last year is to you know set up the mood for 2023 reading i'm hoping to document my reading better i don't just mean on here but maybe on the podcast there's always a link downstairs i hope to revive it because i've literally done nothing this year no roundups no nothing um and to make different content there actually my hope with the podcast is to have people come on and talk about the books that have influenced like the art practice, their literary practice, or even just the life they lead, um, and not have it be an audio version of this, which is essentially what it was originally. It was me doing weekly roundups uh, or monthly roundups and so on. And also hopefully interview a few authors, talk to them about their craft and so on, because you can find a link to the podcast below, as I said, and the la latest episode is one in which I had Disha Filio and Dinda Kiyoko on to talk about their writing and especially talk about the secret lives of church ladies which I absolutely love it sits in a place of prominence on my shelf um yeah so that's it as I said I'm hoping to read lots of books but even if I don't I actually quite enjoyed this week of only reading three books you know we talk about this all the time but yeah I think it's so important to give oneself grace in the way we talk about our reading and how many books we are reading and so on and again as always some perspective like some of my homies have read 20 books this year and they're having a good time like so don't stress yourself you know or one book a month or 10 books a year or whatever so as long as you're having a good time that's all that matters now somebody needs to go for their run so thank you so much for watching please like share subscribe and all of the good things leave a comment tell me what you're reading tell me what you have lined up for you know that one week between christmas and new year's and i'll talk to you soon bye